Okay. Can you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes? Okay, wonderful. Okay. Okay, so um, so during the, the first lecture, I uh, introduced uh, the notion of string diagram for monoidal categories. And then the uh, second and third lecture, I explained uh, the notion of game semantics, okay, and asynchronous game semantics. And I uh, described the relationship between, say, game semantics and the connectives of linear logic. And so uh, this time, during this lecture, I will uh, explain how to connect the two, okay? So it's quite natural to ask whether there is a string diagram notation for proofs, since after all, uh, there is a string diagram notation for nots, because, uh, well, the string diagram notation here means, in the case of nots, that there is a, a, a perfect connection between the topology of nots and the algebra of their invariant, okay? So, if you want to understand, I mean, essentially, if you want to understand uh, what a not invariant is, it's quite natural to try and organize it into a monoidal category, and more precisely, uh, what I call the ribbon category, so it's, it's a braided monoidal categories. So all this story is well known in, uh, I mean, uh, in algebra, so in particular, people working in so-called uh, quantum groups, it's, it's a very uh, basic uh, tool now. And the question is whether, I mean, how sh should we, uh, I mean, how can we adapt it so that we don't write down nuts, but rather proofs, okay? And uh, in a way, the starting point, I mean, the natural connection between nut theory and, and proof theory is game semantics because as we saw, uh, yesterday is very simple, okay? So, uh, and it speaks about very basic interactions, okay? So, uh, yes, so I like this picture. It's the people trying to understand a long time ago what is the blood flow, yes? And so they had, because they didn't really under understood what this meant, you know, about the, the flow of, uh, of the blood. And here, in a way, we're trying to do something similar. We're trying to understand the, the flow of uh, control. Yes? So what happens is when, when like, uh, we have a program and different procedures, it's important to know who controls what. Okay? And we can think of it as a flow. And so uh, we will see that really what we'll try and, and, uh, and extract from the logic is some notion, very basic notion of flow and time, okay? And so there is this kind of very basic claim that negation is the time of logic because it is the turn, you know, in games. So if I give you my turn, it takes some time, okay? And so it's inter interesting then to try and understand the relationship between this logical time and the real time, okay? And uh, they're related, that no, they're not necessarily the same. So now, remember, so all this analysis starts from these uh, asynchronous games where we play, so the idea, every proof describes uh, a strategy on, on these games. And you can think of it as, you know, the game is a bit like, like something like this. And, and the trajectories, so it's a trajectory on, on that game here. And this is the way we, we think of a proof. But now, uh, as I explained uh, yesterday, it appears that the, 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 the proofs induce strategies which are not simply strategies, they are positional. St 
strategies. So in particular, in, the, in this very simple game here, uh, if we have the strategy for two tensorfalls, okay, it's completely described by these four positions. Okay, the starting position, the position where, where only the left memory cell has been uh, tested, or the right memory <laughs> cell here, and then the two of them. Okay, and these four positions describe the proof, if you like. But in that case, it's so simple. But what is important is that this works for the whole. Uh, intuitionistic logic, say, or okay, the whole uh, logic we're considering. So every time you have a proof, you can look just at the position that the proof reaches, and from it, you can reconstruct it. Okay. So then the question, like I was saying, is uh, we have a perfect logic for positions. So if you like, if we just look at the positions, we have a perfect logic called linear logic. Okay. But then we have problems to use this linear logic to study proofs. Ah, sorry, to study proof, no, but to study strategies, okay? To, to understand proofs as strategies. So it's quite natural to ask whether we, uh, we could de design, so if you like linear logic is here, it speaks about the positions of proofs. It's quite natural to ask whether it's possible to define a logic that would speak about the uh, trajectories and the dynamics. And so this is the purpose of uh, what I call tensorial logic. And the reason is that uh, it's a logic, but at the same time, it's very much connected to so-called tensorial strengths. So we will see that a bit later, which are um, device uh, which equip monads, in particular uh, monads describing side effects. Okay. So in fact, it's a way to connect, if you like, linear logic and the, the general theory of side effects in the case of continuations. Okay. So that's the purpose. But at the same time, this is the way it arose. But if we think of it, it's really a primitive logic of tensor and negation. Okay. So you cannot do less, in a way, than this logic. And I, I mean, the only thing, the, the only question, is it an interesting logic? Okay, does it contain anything really new? Okay, because in a way, uh, we will see this logic is, is a fragment of all the logics you know. Okay, so any notion of logic contains this logic. So it's kind of a question whether it, it's interesting to study it, like you see, in itself. And the point is that the logic is very small, but it's very simple, and it's so simple we can use new tools. Okay, and the whole purpose is to show the tools here. But more generally, I have this uh, kind of mental picture that we're looking for the com components of logic, the primitive components. So there is negation here. And then there are other, other combinators. So we saw the tensor product. There is also the sum. We discussed this uh, yesterday. There is the repetition modality here, this one. So the bang of linear logic. The existential quantification, the least fixed point. And if you think about these four primitives, they are data structures, okay? So they're building, th this is building a, a pair, this is building a backtracking where, so this enables to, to repeat uh, an object. The existential gives a witness, the mu produces a least fixed point, so it's an, indu an induction. All these are data structures, okay? But now, logic has to do with data structure plus duality. That's why negation is so important, okay? So t a typical proof, produces a little data structure of negations of proofs again. Okay, so that means I construct a data structure and then uh, this data structure contains negations and this means when I reach this negation, I give you the turn and now it's your turn to build the data structure. Okay, and that's the way uh, all these logical systems work. So from that point of view, negation is very particular, okay? And it's also known in the theory of side effect that continuations are a bit special. Uh, so uh, in, in particular, they are not so-called algebraic effects. So it's interesting to study uh, it somewhat independently. So here I, I show the logic uh, in a kind of traditional way, okay? So uh, as you will see, it's, I mean, it's some, you will kind of recognize immediately 
the kind of logics you're used to, okay? So, uh, uh, and you can think of this uh, as, if you wish, okay, as a fragment of uh, any logic, because you will typically define this as A implies R for R, a return type, okay? A return type or formula. Okay. So you take intuitionistic logic, you take linear logic, you take any logic that you like, okay? And yes, it's hardly readable. I should, uh, I should use another color. Yes, this one seems to, oh no, this one, yes. So I can use the, yes. Can you read it? Yes, it's okay, I just. Okay. Okay, so take, say, uh, simply type lambda calculus and define negation of A as A implies R. R, any type you like, okay? And think of it as a return type. So, okay. So, uh, okay, so how, how is this uh, logic defined? I mean, what are the rules? So first, so yes, I should say a sequent in the logic is very simple. It's a, it's a sequence of formulas and there is one formula on the right, okay? One formula. And in fact, okay, Sometimes, uh, as we will see, there is no formula, okay? And no formula means that, in fact, it's like the formula R, okay? So this, that means you have, like, directly the return type, okay? So here, yeah, there is nothing new, really, okay? The only thing is that, okay, you have the axiom here, you have the cut here, which is the usual cut. You, you, you plug A into this, you plug the output here in this input, and you get this. Uh, negation is very simple. You have, if you have uh, a formula on the right, you put it on the left and you, put, you add a negation. And if you have a formula on the left, you put it on the right with a negation, okay? So in a way, the negation counts the number of times a formula jumps over uh, the dash here, okay? So here it jumped once, and here it jumped once, okay? And so that's the very basic. These four rules are really the basis. And then the tensor product, for instance, is just as usual. If you have gamma proves A, delta proves B, you have gamma delta proves A, A tensor B. So it's the same rule as in uh, linear logic, okay, or the usual introduction of conjunction. Uh, the only thing is we, we, we are very careful that gamma and delta are disjoint, okay? But uh, yes, that's a usual thing in, uh, in linear logic, say. And tensor on the left is just this one. You replace the comma by a tensor. Okay, it's exactly as usual. So of course you can uh, also have, uh, okay, the uh, repetition modality of linear logic, and so it's, it's defined like this. So it's exactly the same rules as linear logic. So for instance, here if you have uh, two inputs, but like these inputs are modal formulas, you can contract them. Uh, here, if you have no input, you can weaken and, uh, with a modal uh, formula, and you can derelict and promote. All these things are uh, just, in the most straightforward way, extracted from linear logic. Okay? Then you have rules for existentials. Okay? So there is nothing really new in the logic it itself. Okay? And we can think of it as linear logic, but where we are very careful whenever a formula goes left, from the right to the left, or from the left to the right, we annotate with a little negation, okay? And in linear logic, we will annotate with a negation, but when we, 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 a formula goes on the right and then on the back, because, I mean, on the left, because we have two negations, and two negations in linear logic is just like nothing, we forget, okay? So, in a way, it's, it's a linear logic where we would be very careful about what happens during the construction of the proof. So, now the point is that, remember, we are looking for the hidden positions okay, of our games. So, uh, in uh, linear logic, the Boolean would be interpreted as 1 plus 1, okay? And here, we'll be very careful, we'll 
put these double negations in front of 1 plus 1. And these two negations correspond exactly to the length, okay, the depth of the Boolean game. And that's the reason why we are so careful about negations, because negations are uh, describing the turns in the game. Okay? So the Boolean game uh, so yes, I will erase this beautiful piece of art. Yes, I'm sorry, this is like barbarism, I'm sure, but uh, so uh, the Boolean game is like this. And really, the first move is the first negation, if you like. So it's an opponent negation. Then the second move is a player negation. But the, the fact that we have two moves here corresponds to the fact that we have 1 plus 1. But what is important is the depth. So we have, the, if you like, the first negation, the second negation, and now 1 plus 1. Okay. So the, the Okay, and the point is that you, sh you, sh you, sh you should think of, of these uh, moves as turns. So if I give the turn to the player, it's his turn, so he can choose between the sum, and he does it. So he selects which component he wants to play in. Okay, and that's the reason why here, you see, there is the first turn by opponent, and the, first, the second turn by player, and t player chooses which one he wants to play with, okay? Which component he wants to play on. Yes? So what does the game one look like? So one would look just like this thing. So one is just the game where, you know, you'll just have one, tem I mean, one position, and you will play on it. Yes? So what is the game one plus one? Yes. Yes, I see you are very, yes. So one plus one would be this, yes? The negation of one plus one would be this. And negation of, negation of one plus one would be this, yes? So really the idea is that negation is a turn, okay? It's your turn. So you can choose between true and false, okay? I don't understand one plus one, because I thought they all had to be no, we will have, if we have sums, in, okay, remember in the models I gave you, we had products, we didn't have sums. So if you want to have sums, you should allow forests. Okay? But that's a minor point, yes. And in fact, the point is that all the formulas we consider in, in typical logic, we have a negation in front. So then it's a, for, it's a, it's a tree, yes? But, okay, one plus one is the game where a player chooses, you know, one component. Then negation is, well, I give you, it's your turn, then you choose. And double negation is, uh, you know, you ask me and then, and then you choose. Yes? Okay. And the point is, yes. Yes, yes, I can give you the rules for plus. Yes, that's true. I should have. Um, I will do that here. But in fact, they are just the expected rules, okay? So they are just the rules you gave, for instance, in your system. So, so we are like this, uh, and we will have gamma A plus B, uh, gamma B goes to gamma A plus B. So there are the two uh, introductions, okay? And uh, now on the left, it's like this. So if I have gamma A, and maybe I will put a C here, and gamma B put a C here, then I have gamma A plus B to C, yes. So the right hand side can't be empty? Is that yes, in fact, to be frank, I, I, so I use this kind of notation and because that means I don't really care. But of course, you should maybe care, okay? But the thing is, I, I take, okay, I have this view that there, are, there may be several systems and then there are subtleties about them, but the underlying uh, semantics is the same. 
Okay, so you should care, but I, th I mean, at that level, I think it's, it's okay, yes. So, so, uh, and, uh, so typically, if you want to build the, 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 the uh, so this is like, uh, this is injection left and injection right, okay? So if you want to build the strategy true, you do that, and then you do that. And this is the strategy true, and this is in left, and the strategy false is uh, in right. Yes? Yes? Then, if you want to, so that's, but that's in that game, now if you want double negation, you put it on the left and on the right. Okay? And then you have a double negation. So for instance, okay, you do this, and then you do this. Okay, so you will tell me, but this double negation is a bit stupid, and I will answer you, but yes, of course, but that happens in life, that we take stupid turns, okay? And we will see it's very important. This is very important in the evaluation uh, of programs, okay? But I could be a bit, uh, I, mean, uh, uh, I mean, really use the double negation by putting the formula on the left and then adding a bang, you know, adding this repetition modality. So. You see here, for instance, I could just do negation of one plus one, okay? Then add a bank, and then have negation, bank, negation, one plus one. Okay, so, so if you like, this is like, uh, this is the, uh, stra the, the strategy in that case, uh, the true, true strategy in the Boolean, and this is a true strategy in this Boolean, which I call classical Boolean, okay? And I will explain why. But the point is, so, uh, that when one translates uh, this, uh, uh, typically, uh, simply type lambda calculus or, or functional programs by continua in the continuation passing style, usually one uses this kind of interpretation for the Boolean, but now if we look at, so I will explain why at, uh, a bit later, but if we look at the, the language, like for instance PCF, which is just the lambda calculus with uh, recursion, uh, the Booleans are interpreted like this, like, like yes, this one, okay? Okay. Yes. So uh, may maybe, yes, I could maybe just, uh, yes. yes, you can ask a question, yes. Okay, so, um, you're writing the Boolean in temporary loss, which is not, not one plus one. But, I mean, one plus one is already a formula of temporary loss. Yes. Which is just to be called Boolean. Yes, if you like, yes. It's not a problem, so, uh, I could call it. I, I, I could have called it two, if you like, yeah. and then you would say Boolean is not not two, and Bob would have supported me. You see, yeah. so. <laughs> no, the point is, uh, if we look at the way uh, uh, the Booleans are interpreted in a typical, uh, like, say, co co call by name language. Okay, it will be like this. But it also called call by value. So essentially, uh, that means that uh, there's a query and then you answer. Yes. That's, I mean, depends on what you call a Boolean. I agree that we could co call, I mean, this is perfect, and then we could, but this could be called two, and then. But if, if you interpret the formula one plus one in sequential games, yes. you already have this query. So so all the games I've shown for the Booleans, that they are the interpretation of this one. Yes? So one plus one, I, again, you see, this is double negation of one plus one. No, but I, I say this is one plus one, this is not double negation. Because this is not a negative game, right? Sorry? No, I don't understand. The point is, wh what matters is that uh, what matters is that when we interpret our games, okay, this will be the interpretation of the double negation, 
So it will be the usual kind of games for the Booleans. And now when we interpret this, uh, the logic in, in, I mean, in games, 1 plus 1 will be interpreted as, as this. No, because, uh, yes, the point is that sequ sequential, okay, there, is there are lots of subtleties. Sequential games are a model of tensor logic with a product. Okay, so if you want to have sums, like here, you need to take, uh, so technically it's called a family construction, you, you need to take the free sum on these sequential games, and then you will get it. So in the free sum construction, you have this forest, okay? And so it's a, if you like, it's a forest of sequential games. Yes, and so if I want to interpret uh, tensor logic with a sum, I need, to, I need this forest, okay? But now if I want to recover the usual interpretation, I need to take this double negation or, or negations, and whenever I have a negation, it's, it, it's, again, it's again a tree, okay? But okay, I didn't want to go into this. This is the game for the one plus one. No, this is, this is, this is, because there is no plus. So what happens is in the usual uh, game semantics is that there is no plus, or you put them in a kind of brutal way, okay, and that's it. Then you get this, okay. But brutal is okay in that case. Usually brutal is not good, but in that case, you just say, okay, I have my model and I take the free model with sums, and this works, okay. Yes. So no yes, exactly. So, so one plus one is exactly the collection of the final position. Yes, and here when you double take double negation, you you obtain this. Okay, but the important point is that okay, when I take this notation, I can add a modality in the middle. Okay, so this is what I'm doing here. Okay, <laughs> this is what I'm doing here. So this modality, if you think about it, it says, okay, I have, a, I have a question, and this is this opponent turn, but now I have my two answers, P, sorry, so true and false, but maybe I will never answer, so I'm allowed to stop here because of the bank, okay? So there is a, uh, this issue about p some positions are, are, have good payoff, so I'm allowed to stop on them, okay? And so I will not go into this, but it's important that here, typically, this is a terrible payoff for the strategy, so it cannot stop here. So, the, the, okay, the strategy wants to, to escape from that position, okay? Whereas if you, if you add this modality here, you're allowed to stop there. But that means that if you think about the computation, there should be a garbage collector, okay? There should be someone that says, okay, this has not been kind of uh, used, I will destroy it, okay? So let's carry on, okay. So now, uh, so a typical thing to do with this uh, 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 logic is to construct this strategy. So Boolean is this, thing, okay? And now, uh, a proof of uh, tensorial logic will look like this. It's exactly a strategy, okay? So if you look at the, at, at the sequence here, you can kind of uh, reconstruct the proof from the, uh, from the path or from the strategy. So here, for instance, it says, you have, like, you have double negation, tensor, double negation, and here double negation. I could, uh, yes, I could show you. I, I will construct it, so it's, it's a good exercise. Oops. Yes, but yes. Okay, so I start from double negation of one plus one, tensor, double negation of one plus one, proves double negation of one plus one, okay? So this is like a comma, okay? So now, this is, you should think of, of this, uh, you should think of this negation as, as turns, so as moves. So now, there is a 
question here, this question says, well, I should play that negation. OK, so I will remove that negation. So I will keep everything like, like it is. But now I jump on the other side. Yes, and I, I'm here now. Okay, and this this means I played this negation. So I, I, I mean, this is the first question. Okay. Now we have this move here, the second move here. Remember, this is supposed to uh, yes, this to implement a conjunction. So really, there is a question asking what is the value of the output. And what the strategy does is asking the value of the two inputs in order, yes? So here, the, the left to right strategy, what it does, it asks the value of the first component first. So that means we should take this formula here, okay? And this is this formula that we will move on the right. So we keep double negation of one plus one, negation of one plus one, and here negation of one plus one. Okay, now we carry on. So the next move here, A1, is this negation here. Yes, so I should uh, erase it, if you like. So I get one plus one, double negation of one plus one, and then uh, negation of one plus one. Okay, now the next move is this a uh, question here, so this corresponds to this negation, so I should uh, erase it, I mean I should, uh, I mean depends on how we, we look at things, but this means I should take this formula on the right, so I get negation of one plus one, negation of one plus one. Then the next move is this one, so this move here is this one, so I just put the formula on the left. Uh, yes. A negation of one plus one. Okay. And then the left. So, yes, I, I, I did, I, I, yes, okay. Yes, uh, maybe I should have proceeded in a slightly different way, but we, we will see. Okay. okay. So, so here, you see, I reach this move. So, so, so we have done six, mo six moves. And in fact, the six moves correspond to the six negations we have here. OK? But I, I did it in a very kind of stupid way because, uh, in fact, here, OK, what I wanted to stress is that if you look at the, at, uh, in the end, what you get is here a tensor product. OK? So this is equal to 1 plus 1 plus one, plus one. You see, this is two times two. This is equal to four, because tensor distributes over sum. So I've got four, a game, with a forest with four points, and here, a forest with two points. And what I'm describing is just the truth table of the conjunction, okay? The four points correspond to true tensor true, true tensor false, false tensor false, false tensor true. And for each of them, I associate, I associate an output, okay? So this is really the truth table of conjunction, and all this is about the dynamics of calls, okay? But what I could have done is kind of, whenever I, I had a sum here, I could have played it immediately and picked the uh, value I'm interested in, okay? But I did it in a very lazy way here. But the point is that uh, if we take now, so from this we can easily construct a proof which corresponds to the uh, truth table of conjunction, and we are done. When we look at the proof and we interpret it in the semantics, we get that strategy, okay? So of course there is this strategy, but there is also this other strategy, you see, which is exactly the same thing, except that it asks the value of the second component first, okay? <coughs> so something very important that I learned from Pierre-Louis, I remember, a few years ago, yes, a long time ago when I was a student, and that was very important, and we kind of forgot it, okay? It was very important before linear logic uh, came, in a way, but then we kind of forgot it, okay? We didn't maybe, uh, yes. 
So what is it? So I mean, it's the, the fact that if you look at these two programs, okay, in a purely uh, functional language, they are equal. So that means that if you program with a simply type lambda calculus with recursion, okay, you can write down your conjunction in one way or the other. Okay? So that means you call the first component, then the second component, or you call the second component, then the first component. It's the same program. Okay? And that was a, like a strong motivation of Scott domains. Okay? Because in Scott domains, like Scott semantics, what, what, what uh, happened is that the two programs have the same semantics, the same denotation. And because they have the same denotation, it means that there is no, I mean, no context which is able to separate them. It's not possible from, for, for, for uh, if you like, a program in that very simple language to separate them. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's, yes. Yes, but the thing is, uh, yes. The thing is, uh, this, this phenomenon is in fact deeply related to linear logic. Okay. And so what I will claim is that the first time I know that, you know, about linear, a linear type is in PCF. Okay. So which is a bit counterintuitive because PCF is a purely intuitionistic language. I mean, in the sense it's simply type lambda calculus. But that's true, except for the constants. Okay, so the constants are linear, and that's why there is a big difference between uh, this, if you like, which is linear. It's a linear negation, and here, where it's a kind of intuitionistic negation, in fact. Okay. So uh, okay. So in that sense, if you like, the first time we had a linear language was with PCF, but we didn't realize. But in fact. Uh, Girard, I mean Jean-Yves Girard realized it because linear logic started from a model of uh, PCF, okay? And it's not by chance, it's really crucial, okay? So uh, now let's see why, why there is no way to distinguish the two programs in PCF. Again, PCF is this pure, lamb pure I mean, simply type lambda calculus essentially with uh, Recursion, but when you have Boolean types, you don't care about recursion, so it's really simply type lambda calculus. Okay. So why? So let's try and differentiate them. Okay. So the idea is to pr produce a little program here. Okay. So of that type, so it starts from B tensor B, a row B, and then it maps it into B. And what we want is to kind of distinguish what happened inside. Okay. So that program is called a taster because it's here to taste and say, oh, this is a good program. Oh, no, this is not a good program. So it's like an analogy applied to programming. And so we have these two, uh, this, this, this one program which should be able to differentiate them. So the point is that because we are in the uh, lambda, calcu lambda calculus, uh, so we can interpret this program as a strategy. And if we look at the sequence of interactions, what we would like typically is this. That, OK, a question is asked to the Boolean here. What the strategy does is ask the value of the Boolean. Then it waits for the reaction of the strategy. And if the strategy is a right to left, OK, the right to left implementation of the conjunction, immediately it says true. It's a right to left implementation. But now if the strategy here is a left to right implementation of the conjunction, then it says false. Okay? It's a left to right implementation. Okay? So this is a strategy which we would like to implement. Okay? So there would be another way to distinguish them, which would be to, to interact entirely with them, okay? the left to right and the right to left, and to remember that they were different. But the thing that I explained uh, yesterday is that Innocence, if you, if you remember, is about forgetting the order in which things happened. Okay? So if the whole comp I mean, if you really interact, so if a taster in PCF okay, interacts entirely with the program here, it, it, will, it will forget the difference, it will not see the difference between this program and this program. This is innocence. Okay? But there is another constraint on a strategy associated to the PCF language, which is called well-bracketing. Okay. And so 
the point is, the traditional view, if you like, is that it's not possible to program such a strategy here because it's not well bracketed. So I should explain what bracketing here means. It says that, well, you see there is a question by the environment and the strategy asks the question, then the, uh, uh, the conjunction reacts to the, to the question of the strategy here. And each question is a kind of opening bracket. And so it's not good, I mean, it's not good to, for a strategy to close a bracket here when there are two internal brackets opened, okay? That's the definition, I mean, informally, of uh, well bracketing. And the theorem by uh, Martin Heilong and Luke Ong is, is that, uh, let's say, at least for when, when we only look at finite types, like Booleans, okay, uh, that the strategies implemented by a PCF program are exactly the innocent strategy and well bracketed strategy, okay? Innocent and well bracketed. So that means it's not possible to implement that little thing because of uh, well bracketing. But th the problem, okay, it's a very nice characterization, it's a beautiful one. The problem is that we would like to, to understand what it means outside of game semantics from a more logical point of view. And so the observation is that, okay, now we had, you see B and B and B here, but imagine we transform the B into the C, okay? So we add this modality, bang, okay, in the middle, then it's possible to implement that, okay? But we need to change uh, this Boolean into the one where we add a bang. And why is it possible? Because you see, what, what really what is forbidden is not really, okay, well bracketing is, is, uh, is, is in fact simply a consequence of a, of a more kind of canonical uh, requirement, which is that when you ask a question to a, a Boolean, okay, you should have the answer. So when the Boolean is a B, okay, but when it is a C, it's okay to never have the answer. So you ask a question and the, the, your opponent is not forced to answer at all, okay? Even he may answer several times, okay? So you have no requirement, you don't force the, uh, you see, if you ask a question, to, there is this, uh, this nice um, uh, you know, theory in philosophy. So it's about Russell and, uh, you know, and this, uh, uh, I mean, British school in pra pragmatism and so on. So there is a difference between asking the time, what time is it, and saying, I don't know what time it is, okay? So what's the difference? So Russell, you know, his theory was that everything is about knowledge. So if I tell you that I don't know the time, it should be the same as asking you what time is it. But what is the difference? So, do you know? I don't know the time might be the response to what time is it? Ah, yes, that's true. That could be an answer. You're, you're right. But if I tell you I don't, don't know the time, you say, well, too bad. Okay? <laughs> yes. But... Uh, now, if I s ask you what time is, is it, I implement a linear channel between us, okay? I ask you the time, you have to answer, mm -hmm. okay? So here, the, the bang, if you like, if when I add a little bang here, I says it means you don't have to answer, you see? So it means like, oh, I would like to know the value of that Boolean, okay? <laughs> it's not the same as please tell me the value of the Boolean, okay? So. Uh, so, and that's the dif difference here. So, you see, if we have this little uh, kind of, so here this is implementing this type here, is the type of the conjunction, but it's a conjunction we ask you the value of the Boolean, but well, say, oh, I would like, if you give me the value of the Boolean, it would be really good, but I don't ask you really. Uh, yes? But the first bit should not be a C. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Yes. Because uh, the thing is, it's a completely symmetric thing. So here, the, the fact that I put a C means that I, the taster, okay, if you ask me the question, I don't have to answer, okay? So I can say, oh, well, you know, he asked me that question, he asked me that question, okay? But now, uh, and because this is a C, okay? Now, when it is, uh, uh, I mean, if I put a C here, it means, uh, I, uh, it, it means I tell, I t when I taste you, I, I say you don't have to answer, but that doesn't change anything. 
Okay? So really, uh, what is important here is that uh, uh, it's a constraint, if you like, uh, on the taster that is relaxed. The taster doesn't have to answer. And you can think of it as also garbage collect collecting. It means that this, this pass can be played. Some stuff will remain in the types, but that's OK. They can be removed because I have this modality. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> so there are these two explanations that, that I think you, you are relating quite well here. Yeah. <coughs> the jump from uh, intrinsic to classical. Yes. So we have seen this idea from your first lecture yes. that it's you can uh, change your mind. Yes. Yes. Okay. So something like yes. nonlinear. Yes. And here, here we, we have this explanation yes. of well bracketing. Yes. Yes. So can you comment on? Yes. This? So uh, yes. So so okay. So so the the question is control yes is. yes 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 yes. 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 So that, so that's I will uh, yeah that was the next slide but so so the thing is if you look at a, a purely functional program you cannot implement these uh, things okay so uh, this means that the, the booleans are interpreted like this okay and that in fact. Uh, the, the interpretation, if you like, of PCF into uh, Scott domains through linear logic. Okay, so if you factor, you will get this. Now, uh, uh, now if you change the interpretation of the booleans, you can do that, and this, okay, this strategy, in fact, is exactly the strategy associated to a control operator, a typical control operator. Okay, and this means that. Uh, you know there is some kind of uh, here a call CC. There is a, a, a stack of calls. At some point, it, it returns, okay, uh, without looking at the. I mean, uh, at the. Uh, I mean, it's not forced to carry on, uh, and um, and follow the kind of policy of the stack. Okay, it can just return. So uh, that. So, so, so now what is, what is important here is that it is the same device, so the, this backtracking modality, that we saw in the first or second lecture when uh, we spoke about classical logic versus uh, intuitionistic logic, and here, okay? And typically, uh, uh, the, the point is that uh, when we move from intuitionistic logic to classical logic, we move from a purely functional uh, programming language, typically of, of proofs, to a language where we have these controls. Okay? So here, it's, it's a way to say that, in fact, uh, we can mix. We don't have to you know, either consider intuitionistic or uh, classical. In the same system, we can have both. Okay? So maybe, uh, yes. Yes. So if you like the distinction between intuitionistic logic, lambda calculus, well-bracketed strategies, or purely functional, in fact, uh, and, and, and so if you, if you wish, there is classical logic, lambda mu calculus, non-well-bracketed strategies, and control operators, all this is regulated by this modality. Okay? So it has to do with linearity constraints, okay? which is it's not... Obvious, but if we think about it, it's quite natural. We cannot use control because we are forced to uh, play. I mean, we are we are forced. We, we don't have garbage collector to remove the dirty things we leave. Yes, that's the idea. Yeah. So uh, and from that, it becomes possible to mix the two. Okay, so some types would allow control, some other types would not allow control. This is the idea of the these two booleans. Okay, depending on the booleans, you can have this program or not. Okay, and I, I think it's important, and I will, uh, in particular, the reason why it is important is that I think the, the two programs, I mean here, yes, these two programs, okay, when we write down a conjunction, you know, when we implement a conjunction, we don't necessarily, I mean, essentially, we don't want anyone to know how we implemented it. Okay, whether it's left to right or right to left. It's a bit like, uh, I mean, you know, abstract types. We don't wa necessarily want people to know how we did that. And so uh, it's not because we're we are working in big languages that, you see, for, for instance, ML, if we have a Boolean, you know, if I, if I program my two, my two programs, clearly I will be able to distinguish them. 
But it, it doesn't have to do with the fact that the, lo the, the, the language is very expressible. It has to do with the fact that our types are not sufficiently expressible. Okay? We should have types in ML where, you know, if I implement this program and the other, they're, 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 nobody will be able to distinguish.